Hello everybody, this is going to be episode one officially now of Gamified Hacking. Uh, I'm on the new stuff now, hopefully with a new cam and a better microphone, we can get off the MacBook, get the screen up and try and actually do some stuff here. Um, I try and prepared some stuff here on the computer and pulling up uh, a VM here to get some stuff going so I can show you guys what we have going here. Um, and I'm going to try and kind of go in order, but... Episode one, official episode one, uh, we're gonna start at the beginning and we're gonna talk about uh, collecting scopes, seed domains, and getting started hunting. Um, the two programs I'm gonna use as an example today are off of Hacker One, um, but it's uh, the same thing applies whether it's Bug Crowd, Hacker One, uh, Integrity, whatever it is. Um, we're just gonna get started today on getting all your domains and one thing that a lot of hunters miss and this very first step is looking at scope and then grabbing as many things as you can from that. And I'm going to talk about that today a little bit. So one of the first examples we have here, I'm going to use two different uh, platforms or different programs, I should say, as an example here. Uh, the first one's going to be American Systems. Again, these are totally random. They just kind of fit the video. So the first one is American Systems. Uh, launched just a little bit ago in April. I guess at the time of this video would be a few months ago. And if we go look at their scope here, they have a what a lot of people consider a pretty wide scope, right? But all of these wildcard domains means anything on this domain uh, is fair game, right? Which is really good for a lot of people to see, especially people that like wide recon. Uh, if you don't see this wildcard, if it's just a regular domain, something that maybe looks like this, even though this, this is the oddest scope. So this is what we can't hit, right? This is stuff they don't want us hacking on, they don't want us doing. But if a domain like this was up in scope, that means only this domain, none of the subdomains available to that, only this and the paths below it uh, would be available to hack on. But these wildcard domains is one example of like, as we start collecting what most people would call seed domains to hack on, this is a good start, right? So this digitalaccess.com, asc.name, American alliant.com, um, ascgov.com, all this stuff. All these are seed domains and any subdomain and anything on those subdomains are all free game. Um, cool for us, as you can see here, are all eligible for bounties. So this would be a really good program for someone that wanted to get started and grab a bunch of domains and like really do wide scope recon, uh, which is kind of my forte or what I like to do. Um, this is a really good program for that. Whereas something even wider where people really start to get in the weeds is something like GameStop. GameStop launched their VDP, at least on Hacker One, about a month ago from the time of making this video. And their stuff, if you go look in the scope here, it says all assets owned by GameStop are in scope for this program. This includes all of the GameStop owned entities such as Game Informer, Micromania, FR, and EB Games, which we'll talk about in a second and the GameStop International brand. And it goes on to talk about what we can and can't do, and we'll go over that a little bit later when we actually get into some exploitation stuff. This is strictly like recon and collecting data. Um, but what this means is this is basically GameStop saying is it's free game. As long as GameStop owns it, it's free game for us, which opens up a totally different skill set, right? Because when we were back looking at American systems, they just gave us the domains, right? We couldn't go really look at what American systems owned, right? So American systems is a company. We didn't get to go like look at what they own or look at you know everything they touch and pull it in. We just got the list of domains here in scope domains and we're off to the races where GameStop is a little bit different, right? Because we're in all assets owned. So it's actually up to us and they're kind of leaving it up to us to go find assets to hack on. Now, a little more effort, yes. More opportunity to find things that other hackers and other hunters may not be looking at, also yes. So these are kind of um, a good one, in my opinion, to look for. So the basics here, when I would kind of come at this one, is there's a lot of different options to go after this program. And again, there's not gonna be any vulnerabilities on here. Obviously, I can't, I can't put any vulnerabilities in any of the videos. This is like strictly recon stuff right now. Um, but one of the ways to go look at this is see if GameStop or GameStop Corp Incorporated, et cetera, own uh, 
any IP space. If they like totally control an IP space, and one of those ways to look for this is to see if they have an ASN. This website right here, bgp.he.net, is a perfect thing to start. There's automated tools for this. There's actually a few where you can go and do this automated, right? See, I search GameStop up here and, and this is what came up and it gave me some IP ranges and it actually did give me an ASN number. Again, there's automated tools that do this if you're into the automation thing. The only thing is uh, there have been a lot of people that have said that they have ran into issues with automating pulling ASNs because it accidentally pulls the wrong thing or pulls something very similar or uh, and you and you end up going out of scope, okay? But we can be pretty confident that this ASN we found here is an ASN that belongs to GameStop Incorporated, right? So it's pretty fair to say that we did that. So what I would do personally, th there's a few different ways to go about it, but what I would do then, right, is I take this ASN number, I copy it, and I use a tool called a mass that I'm gonna link in the description. And a mass, you're gonna see it a lot, and there's a lot of different uses for a mass, and I, I don't even use all five of the subcommands. But one of the things you can do is do a mass intel dash ASN, and then paste in this ASN number we saw. So this ASN number, is just this one right here. I just copied it and pasted it in. And you see, it only returned two things, but one of the ones is something we expected, GameStop.com, I mean, that's pretty obvious. But you also see this other one here, ebgames.com. Now, it, it's kind of cheating, because when you go back here, it says it includes all GameStop-owned entities, such as EB Games. So, I mean, you can probably just Google it and find it yourself, but, if they hadn't, we're assuming maybe they hadn't put this here and just left it at all assets owned by GameStop. This would be something where you can go be like, oh, is it, you know, you can go double check what EB Games is. Is it owned by GameStop? That kind of thing. Uh, and this may be another seed domain that you can search subdomains for, paths for, endpoints, etc. Outside of just your basic GameStop.com that everyone else is hunting on. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing to go over is something called reverse who is which basically takes registry information of a domain and looks for that registry information elsewhere very high level description um and surprise surprise a mass can actually do that too so all you do with that is same thing a mass intel using the intel subdomain but we're giving it the slash d flag which is domain and then telling it to run who is on that domain. And you'll see if we run a reverse who is on GameStop.com, we get this huge list of things. Again, pre-warning, not all of these are owned by GameStop. Like 100% not all of these are owned by GameStop. They could have similar information than where they show up uh, on the reverse who is, but I'm gonna guarantee you ragingbullinsider.com or this nationalbank.com, whatever, those probably aren't owned by GameStop. But it may be worth checking Game Trust Games, GameStopBenefits.com, that sounds like it might be a GameStop domain. You're gonna wanna go manually double check these, but a lot of these are maybe worth looking into. Like I said, these top three and then again, cheating because I kind of went through the list before I made the video. Whoops. But if you go down here to the bottom, here's EB Games again, EB World, GameStop.ca, GameStop.net, GameStop spelt wrong.com, GameInformer.com, which again, when you look down here, they, they kind of already gave, but assuming they didn't just give that domain away, that would have been another one to find. EBGames.net is probably one, EBGames.ca, EBEdge.com might be part of EB Games as well. EB Gamer, Power Up Rewards sounds kind of like a gaming thing. EBHoldings.net, EB World, I think I might have already mentioned that. Either way, all these domains, like those ones kind of flagged me as like, okay, that's similar to something that I'm already looking at, right? Um, Versus like something, you know, like idweekinternational.com or like radiokingsband.it. Like they're worth looking into for sure. Um, but again, like Creekside Vet Hospital, like, or maybe, you know, some of these other ones probably aren't GameStop, right? But 
the ones that are, those can all get put in as seed domains. And you can be recording all these. And I'm, I'm going to mention a little thing about data storage at the end. Um, but you can be writing all these down or taking notes of all these different seed domains that may or may not be present, right? Using these two methods, just as a start. Another like maybe wider range, but at least personally not a successful route um, is search engines and Google dorking, right? So one way to do that is to let's say like a super quick example, go to gamestop.com or just a base domain, right? That they already give you that you know is a GameStop domain and go all the way to the bottom of the page and copy copyright information or privacy policies or anything like that. Something that you think would show up on all of their assets or a lot of their assets. And then go to Google and do something like this. Put it in quotes. That means it has to have that in the answer. And then put in URL, whatever you think has to show up. GameStop or EB you know, EV games or whatever it may be, right? And you can search through these and there's ways to, you know, you see www.gamestop right here. You can minus that out up here using Google dorking too and say like, okay, everything, I already know www.gamestop.com exists. So like, just don't show that. Um, again, there's really not that much here. I did a quick scroll through. I haven't found a whole bunch of it, but I know other people have on other programs. So Google, Shodan, um, this kind of stuff with, with copyright information or privacy policies or think, things that just show up on every website, maybe even titles, if they do like similar titles and you're noticing that. It could be worth doing titles too. That would be more of a Shodan thing, but it's possible. The other one and kind of the last one I wanna talk about is acquisitions. And one of the really, I mean, you can Google it and you do have to kind of go do some Googling on the side, even if you use uh, what I'm about to talk about. But the number one thing I think that most people use is something called Crunchbase. Um, some of it is free and, and whatever, but you can do everything you need to do free and then like just supplement it with Google, whatever you need. So again, I went and searched GameStop right up here in the top. GameStop, there it is. And here it says, oh, 13 acquisitions and I can look and here they all are. And if you'll notice, you know, you, you have to really click show more sometime, you know, again, there is a, there's a paid subscription to really get all the information. Um, but again, you could probably go find it all in Google, you know, Wikipedia of GameStop probably has a list of all their acquisitions if you want to look hard enough, but um, just like, you know, again, kind of cheating because they, they mentioned some of their entities that they have out here, but you see this micromania.fr and we haven't really seen that in any of the stuff we've done yet. So we haven't really, you know, if, if we didn't have that, we probably wouldn't have picked it up yet as a domain that GameStop owns to hack on. But if we're looking in their acquisitions, even in the free version here, you see micromania they acquired in 2008. And if you click on Micromania, it takes you to this link and oh, there, there's a website right there. And you open it up to see if it's live and oh, it's still live. Most of the time, some of these, especially really old acquisitions might just redirect to the, to the new owner. Like it might just redirect to gamestop.com or it might be taken down or, or something else. But something like this, uh, this is still up and it's still obviously their site, right? Now, it's very obvious that GameStop still owns this because back on their page, they mention GameStop owned entities such as Micromania. But if they didn't mention that and you found something like this, it would probably be a pretty smart idea to just Google and, and, and do some stuff and maybe look at copyrights and whatever and look through Micromania's past as a company and make sure that they're owned by GameStop, just 100% sure. Because sometimes even though they, a company might get acquired by another company, they'll get juggled around a couple years later and then they're owned by someone else. So it's just, just again, making sure as you get stuff out of acquisitions and reverse who is and all this stuff, like just making sure and you'll start to pick up on patterns um, of stuff that is and isn't owned by the company. And just using like these groups of techniques alone, we've already acquired like multiple domains that don't say GameStop or that say GameStop, I think there's like a GameStop CA in one, and there's a, there's a bunch of different ones for EV games too. And you can just collect these domains 
And again, if you're a wide scope recon and a wide scope bug bounty kind of person, something like this is amazing because you collect all these domains and now even if let's say 70% of the people hacking on GameStop are trying to look at GameStop.com or something like that, you might find that one outlier domain in an acquisition or in the ASN searching or reverse who is or something, that one crazy domain, like let's say GameStop benefits was live. I haven't checked it, but let's say it's live. That may be something that not many people touch. And if it's live and it's something that GameStop owns and not many people touch, all those things put together statistically should mean that you have a lot better chance of finding something just in general looking at something like that versus just like loading up gamestop.com www.gamestop.com and like starting to put xss payloads in the search bar it's much better to fill your seed domains with as many domains as possible and again like i mentioned before something like this not possible right we have to stick to exactly the scope they give us whether it's a wild card scope or whether it's just a scope that looks something like this and it's just this is the domain you're given um, you have to stick to that. But these kind of programs where it says all assets owned, you can really go into these other methods, ASN enumeration, acquisitions, reverse who is, um, like I said, Google dorking if you want, if you're into Google dorking and Shodan and search engines, um, and pulling these crazy domains out. Now, I'm going to make a separate video about it, but for now, just know that it's important that all of this work you're doing gets recorded. Note taking, uh, all that kind of stuff is super important in bug hunting. All of these seed domains, you don't just wanna find it, you know, hit it once in a URL or a browser and forget about it. You wanna keep all these so that as we move on to, you know, episode two, three, four, and we move on to all these next steps, all of the next steps build on each other. So they're all gonna start with these seed domains and we're gonna go from there in the next video. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but we're gonna go from there in the next video. So all of these seed domains, as of right now, if you wanna throw them in literally a text file and notepad, fine. But all of these seed domains or all the domains that are given out of you know a scope like this that you're just putting in, you should have all the domains together that you're starting with. I'll probably make a separate video on data management and like especially if you throw automation into the mix and there's a lot of data and it can build up fast, but for now, just know that you should be recording everything just like your, again, with the gamified hacking, just like with an inventory in a video game, all of this should go into your inventory. There should be a little inventory slot of your game that is hacking that's seed domains. And here are all my seed domains over in this slot of my inventory and that's where they are. And I can add to them hopefully and hopefully I don't have to take any away, but add to them as I find more, maybe you find more links you go to a domain and find a different seed domain. That's happened to me before. But all of this should be recorded. All of it should be inventory, just like a video game. It's all They're all collectibles. They're all inventory, however you wanna look at it, right? This is just achievement hunting 101, right? If you, if you Again, if you're a gamer. But that's all I really had for this one. Uh, next one, we'll probably go into how to take those domains and now start doing something with them. But this is definitely the first step. This is, like I said, this is actual bug hunting, actual pen testing sometimes, depending on the pen test, but this is actual getting in, grabbing a domain off the scope, or grabbing, you know, if it says all assets, hunting down assets that belong to a company and collecting them so that we can actually get subdomains, endpoints, hopefully find some vulnerabilities. But that's it for this one. Um, let me know, again, quality-wise, equipment-wise. Hopefully, it's a little better now with the cam and I can get the screen in and start showing some stuff. Um, but let me know if there's anything you want to see that you want to see quicker or want me to talk about. Otherwise, I am hopefully going to get some Twitch streams going and I'm going to do that more about the automation piece. Um, for those of you that may be a little further along, I'm going to start rebuilding some automation of my own and I'm just going to like stream it for some people to go through and, and we're going to go through some recon stuff together. And some of that will be about these, you know, finding domains and stuff. So if that interests you, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch. Um, so you get those notifications when I'm going to do it because it'll probably be pretty random. But that's all for now. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Peace.